<laughs> Squeaks and I were just talking about how much fun balloons are. They're stretchy, bouncy, and sometimes they float. <laughs> Ooh, you're right, Squeaks. There is some science behind how balloons do all of these amazing things. And there's more than one way to get started. Let's begin with an experiment that fills a balloon in a very unusual way. Today is going to be fun. Do you know why? Because we're going to do an experiment together. This experiment is going to make this balloon blow up. But we're not going to be blowing into it. Instead, we're going to blow it up using two things that you probably have in your kitchen, baking soda and vinegar. I know it might sound strange, but these two ingredients can make this balloon blow up on its own because of a chemical reaction. A chemical reaction is when two different things mix together and create a change. For example, when you bake cookies, you're creating a chemical reaction. Or after you eat food and burp, that's because of a chemical reaction. Every chemical reaction begins with reactants. Those are the things that you mix together. And after they mix, the stuff that's left over is known as the product. So when you're baking cookies, all of the ingredients that you mix together are your reactants. And once you've mixed them all together, you've made one product, the cookie dough. And what's really cool is that in some chemical reactions, both the reactants and the products can end up looking and feeling totally different from each other. For example, in our experiment, we'll be mixing baking soda, which is a solid, and vinegar, which is a liquid. But when we put them together, they'll combine to make a whole new kind of substance a gas. Here's what you'll need for the experiment. A balloon, a plastic bottle, a tablespoon to help us measure our reactants with, and to help us fill our balloon and water bottle, we're going to use a funnel. And of course, our baking soda and vinegar. And remember, make sure that you're doing your experiment in a place where it's okay to make a mess. All right, first I'm going to put the funnel inside my balloon. Then I'm going to fill the balloon with three tablespoons of baking soda. Now that we've measured our baking soda, I'm gonna wipe off my funnel and tablespoon. Okay, once we've cleaned our tools, let's place the funnel inside the bottle and add three tablespoons of vinegar. Okay, for this next step, we need to be very careful so we don't spill what's in the balloon into the bottle. Not just yet. Now let's take our balloon and making sure that the baking soda stays inside it, put the end of the balloon around the opening of the bottle. If you need an extra pair of hands to hold the bottle, feel free to ask a friend or a grown up to help you. This looks perfect. We're just about ready for our balloon to fill up. On the count of three, let's pull the balloon up and let the baking soda spill down. Okay, are you ready? One, two, three! <laughs> Look at it go, guys! So, what's happening here? Our two reactants mix together to make a new product. The baking soda, a solid, mixed with the vinegar, a liquid, and they created a couple of different products, a liquid and a gas. We can see the liquid at the bottom of the bottle here, but where did the gas go? That's right, into the balloon. The gas that this chemical reaction produced is what made the balloon blow up. Pretty cool, huh? So what do you think would happen if we used more vinegar or more baking soda? Would the balloon grow bigger? Would that change how much liquid is at the bottom of your bottle? Wow, that was a lot more fun than struggling to blow up a balloon on my own. But as slow as filling one is, the air in a balloon can escape really fast. Yep, check out this experiment that turns a balloon into a rocket. It might look like we're having a party, but we're actually conducting an experiment. Squeaks and I are experimenting with balloons to see what happens when we try different things with them, like blowing them up and then letting them go. Want to join us? Before we get started, let's think ahead. Other than balloons, what do you think we'll need? That's right, air. I used air to blow up all of these balloons around me, just like I'll use air to blow up this balloon. There, ta-da! 
Even though we can't see the air around us that we breathe, it takes up space. And when we put air inside of something, like this balloon, it takes the shape of whatever container is holding it. Now, once I blow up a balloon, what do you think will happen if I let go of it and let the air out? Will its shape change? Will it drop to the ground? Or will something else happen? There's only one way to find out. You ready, Squeaks? Okay. One, two, three, let go! So, what happened to the balloon? It flew out of my hand, zipped around a little bit before falling to the ground. And how does it look now? Letting the air out definitely changed its shape. But did you notice what happened right after I let it go? It didn't head straight for the ground. It flew up and around before finally falling down. That's because the air rushing out of the balloon from the bottom forced it to move through the air in the opposite direction. So, if letting go of a full balloon makes it fly around the room, what would happen if the balloon were attached to something? Let's see how we can use balloon power to make a rocket. All you need is some string, a straw, some tape, and a balloon. And maybe a friend or brother or sister or a grown-up to help you. First, tie one end of the string to something big and heavy, like a chair or a table or a door. Now, put the other end of the string through the straw. And tie that end of the string to something heavy too, so that the string makes a flat, straight line. Your rocket is almost finished. Now, blow up the balloon about halfway and pinch the end so the air doesn't escape. You might need someone else to help with this next part. Tape the balloon to the straw, like this. Now, prepare for launch. Are you ready? And blast off! So, what happened? Well, we just saw force in action. Forces are pushes and pulls, and they're what make things move. In this case, the air rushing out of the balloon pushed the straw forward, making it move. And this doesn't just work with rockets made out of straws. You can make a balloon-powered car, a boat, or even a balloon-powered airplane with the right materials. Now, try changing things up a little bit and see if your rocket behaves differently. Try blowing up the balloon even more next time. Do you think your rocket will go farther or not as far? Will it go faster or slower? Keep experimenting with your rocket and find out what you can discover about balloon power. Fun, wasn't it? But that's not all you can do with balloons. Remember when we tried the sticky balloon trick? <laughs> do you want to see a really cool trick? Watch this. I'll take this balloon, rub it on my shirt, and gently place it on the wall. And ta-da! It sticks to the wall. Thank you very much. This balloon sticking trick might seem like magic, but it's not at all. The balloon sticks to the wall because of something called static electricity. And static electricity isn't magic, it's science. Do you want to know how I made the balloon stick? Let's start by talking about opposites. I bet you already know some words that are opposites. Like the opposite of day is, that's right, squeaks, night. And the opposite of up is, right again, down. Well, meet two new opposites. The names of these opposites are positive and negative, and they're special because they attract each other. That means that they pull on one another. If you've ever played with magnets, then you've already experienced things that attract. When I line up two magnets just so, they pull on or attract each other. In fact, when I move them even closer together, they attract each other so much that they stick, just like the balloon stuck to the wall. But I didn't see any magnets on my balloon, and that's because there aren't any. The balloon, the wall, and everything else in the universe is made of tiny little particles. These particles are way too small for us to see. And some of these particles are positive, and some of these particles are negative. They're opposites. And guess what? Positive particles and negative particles attract each other. They pull on each other just like the magnets did. Let's look at my balloon a little more closely. Most of the time, there's about the same number of positive and negative particles in any object that you can think of, like my balloon or my shirt. But when I rub the balloon on my shirt, the balloon takes some of the negative particles from the shirt. Now the balloon has extra negative particles. And when there's an imbalance of positive and negative particles in things, like when the balloon has more negative particles than positive ones, it's said to create static electricity. And when I put the balloon next to the wall, those extra negative particles are attracted to the positive particles in the wall. 
and the balloon sticks to the wall. At least for a while. Anytime two different things rub together, there's a good chance that static electricity will form. Static electricity is what makes your hair stick up when you take off a fuzzy sweater. And it also can give you a shock when you touch something after walking across a carpet, like a doorknob or another person. So static electricity isn't magic, it's science, which is also a lot of fun. So balloons can teach us about electricity, pressure, and chemical reactions. They're basically science lessons on a string. But what happens when you lose one outside? Oh, I know, Squeaks. It makes me sad, too. But there are some pretty amazing things that happen to balloons up there, even if we should never try to release one on purpose. Do you want to learn about them? I'm so glad you're still having fun with that balloon, Squeaks. Oh, right, we did almost lose it today. We were at the pizza place getting some lunch and the balloon slipped out of Squeaks' paw. It went up to the ceiling, but the string was hanging down far enough that I could grab it back. And then we tied it to a water bottle for my backpack so it wouldn't get away again. It's a good thing that it didn't escape while we were outside. Well, a couple of different things can happen to a balloon that escapes into the sky. The regular type of balloon, I mean, that's made out of stretchy rubber stuff. First, the balloon starts to rise higher and higher into the air. That's because balloons aren't filled with regular air, like the kind we breathe. They're filled with something called helium, and it makes the balloon lighter for its size than the air around it. So it starts to float on the air, just like certain things float on water. If you try to push a plastic spoon to the bottom of a bowl of water, the spoon will just float to the top again. If someone lets go of a helium balloon outside, it starts to rise through the air like the spoon at the bottom of the bowl rises up through the water. But unlike the small amount of water in the bowl, there's lots of air all around us and it stretches up really high into the sky. So the balloon keeps floating higher and higher and higher and as it goes higher, the air around it starts to change. The higher into the sky you go, the less air there is. There's still some air, but it becomes more spread out. And as the air outside the balloon spreads out, the helium inside the balloon starts to spread out too, pushing out on the inside of the balloon. What happens next depends on the strength of the stuff the balloon is made of. If the balloon isn't very strong, the helium pushing on it will pop the balloon before it gets too high up. Then the pieces just fall back down to the ground. That's why it's usually not a good idea to send balloons into the sky on purpose. When they come back down in those big pieces, they can hurt animals that think they're food and try and swallow them. But if the balloon is stronger, something different will happen. It will keep floating higher and higher up into the air, sometimes even as high as an airplane. But the air very high up in the sky isn't just more spread out, it's also much colder. When you're as high up as airplanes go, it's freezing. And when rubber gets cold, it becomes stiffer and less stretchy. So eventually, when the cold combined with the helium pushing out from the inside, the balloon can actually shatter, breaking into super tiny little pieces. Those also fall back down to the ground. But since they're so small, you probably wouldn't be able to see them. Whether it pops or shatters, the balloon always does two things. It goes up very high, as far as it can go, and then it comes back down. That's actually what happened to your balloon squeaks, except since we were inside, it could only go as high as the ceiling, and then we were able to pull it back down. Wow, we have learned so much about balloons, and luckily for us, there's still lots of fun we can have with this one. <laughs> if you want to keep learning and having fun with me, squeaks, and all of our other friends, be sure to hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you next time here at the fort.